All right, as it turns out, I'm having a heck of a time trying to find a place for my quote-unquote camera, seeing as it's actually my phone, so I don't can't put it on a tripod. Uh, but I'm going to try to handhold while I do most of this. So right now we'll start up the, the lathe. And uh, I, be, I start with a, uh, I don't know the actual name for this, but I'll call it a centering bit. Uh, they're short, so they're stiff, and that way you're sure to get, uh, you won't get any drill bit walk, so you get, get right into the center of the piece. So we'll just do a little pilot hole there just to get things started. And uh, I don't just drill all the way through as far as I can with a drill bit right away. Uh, I do it this way, basically one at a time, so that I don't, uh, the, the, the drill bit doesn't walk, and then as you get further into the piece, you'll end up with uh, your hole being off center. So it's a little more time consuming this way, but uh, I think the results are better. So I'm going to change to a regular drill bit and I'll be back in a flash. Alright, as you can see I have the other drill bit, or I have the drill bit uh, chucked in the tailstock, and then the tailstock has a, a dial on it. So every revolution is a hundred thou. So these are uh, one inch deep, so I do uh, ten turns. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And I actually go 11 because uh, the cutoff tool is another 125, so there will be nothing left there. And we go on to the next piece. Oop, blocking with my finger there. Anyway, okay, so the hole's drilled. Uh, now I'll put in the um, countersink bit, and I'll show you how I countersink it. All right, so I got the countersink in the chuck and I basically I run that right up into there and I tighten down my tail stock and then I I go 90 thousand steep okay so that's 90 and I loosen up the tail stock and pull it out and as you can see, I have the counter sunk hole. And now we'll go on to the bevel that I put on the, uh, the end. You'll see in a sec. Okay, so this operation is one that you want to try to get uh, the same every time. So what I do is I run the I run the tool to about there, and then I come back here. And I go backwards uh, till I get this zero. Okay, I don't think you can see it because of the glare, but that's right at zero. Okay, now I'm gonna take and find. Oh, I gotta reverse this. I'm gonna take and find the edge of this part because this is at an angle, a very slight angle. It'll move in and out. So, oops. It's kind of hard to do with one hand while I'm trying to video at the same time. But basically, the biggest thing is, you can see that touched, but it was barely... There we go. That was... Uh, there was a piece of uh, material hanging off the end from the, the cut. Okay, so now that I found the edge, I am going to rotate this a hundred thou at a time. 
and then I'm going to just cut this and I have to turn this by hand now I'll go another hundred thou go the other way basically I do two hundred thou on the this this carriage the in and out and because this is at an angle to this as I move this out I take more off I don't know if that makes any sense but that's what's going on here so we go another hundred I don't really worry too much about these cuts being nice because uh, the last one now now I do 80 thou instead of the full hundred and I'm actually gonna come back in and now I'm gonna just do a, a real fine 20 thousandths cut I'm gonna speed this up just a little and I go nice try to go nice and slow Try to get a real nice finish on there. Usually I'm using two hands so that I don't stop at all. Now even though these turn out pretty nice, finish wise, when I'm all done I will polish them up a little bit. I'm not going to go for a real highly polished look, but I want them to look decent. Now that I got that done, I'll put a little, just a little bit of a chamfer on there, and then I, I re, uh, reverse it or actually go forward, and I put another chamfer because this bit is at a little bit of an angle. I get two different chamfers on there. Let's give me will kind of appear to be a radius okay so now the next thing I do is I put the groove in if you look at the print uh, right here we have a small groove and I've been making that 80,000 steep and uh, let me change the bits and I'll show you how I set that up okay what I have in here is a cutoff tool before I said I needed to change the bit, I needed to change the tool. I'm sorry, I have a quick change tool post. And so I have a cutoff uh, tool in the tool post. And what I do is I take something, a straight edge basically, and I line that up until that is exactly at the, the end. So this is zeroed with this right now. Then, because I don't have a um, digital readout, I do the cheap and dirty way. Uh, I have an indicator. It's a one inch dial. I have it set to zero. And the cutoff will be this dimension right here, 8.8750. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to move the carriage until it's 8 .8750 okay now you might be thinking to yourself I said I was going to cut the groove but I actually shut, set the cutoff tool to the to its spot well it just so turns out that when I pull this tool holder out and I put this tool holder in, I'm going to use this tool to cut my, my groove and it ends up being nearly exactly what the, the print says. This allows me uh, to save one step and make sure every one of them is the same then. So I'll uh, show you that operation.
So I run the tool till it just barely touches, of course by hand. Okay, and the dial is at 75. Oops, still can't read it because of the glare. Let's see, I think I don't think I can get rid of that. Oh, there you go. And so then once, so I want to go 80 thou. So I just start counting 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, and that's 80. And then I just back it out, and the groove is in there. So, now I'm going to put the cutoff tool in. And what I do with the cutoff tool is I run it in right there. We're starting at one inch, so I run it in 750 thou. And then I stop, I back it off, I move it over 125 thou, which is the width of the the cutoff tool and then I run it all the way in to cut the thing off so then I end up with a quarter inch um, register or whatever you want to call it that goes into the hole of the drum and uh, that's what keeps it from moving around in there so I'll get the cutoff tool in there and uh, I'll show you that operation okay when I first started using cutoff tools, I was uh, running them in by hand and I, I ran into problems with it grabbing the, the workpiece and breaking the tool and everything. Well, I watched a video on YouTube and they said to just run it in on auto feed and I started doing that and it works out really nice. So right now I'm going to change so that it drives my carriage in. Uh, I have this set in the right spot so I will start it up and I'll run it in by hand just to get it to get it started okay now what's also important here is once again because I don't have a digital readout I have to look at where I'm starting which is 20 thousandths so the dial will go around, I have to go 750 thousandths. And each rotation of the dial is 200. So I will go three full rotations, one half rotation, and then another 50. So I will end up at um, 170 on the dial. And that's how I know when to stop. So this is gonna be kind of a trick because I have to um, do it while I'm, I'm putting the lube on and trying to re record this. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna let you see the start of it and then I'll, I'll stop, put the camera down and I'll finish up and then I'll, I'll show you what it looks like but I'm not gonna be able to do the whole thing while holding the, the camera. So here we go, this is the clutch that, that starts the drive. So I just go ahead and engage the clutch and as you can see it just starts driving itself in there. And we just went 200 thou. So I'm going to stop and I'm going to finish this up because I want to get some lube on there. And I need two hands for that so we'll see you in a minute. Alright so there you can see um, the notch that'll stick into the drum is now formed into the piece. Um, I have the carriage locked so that it wouldn't move on me, so I unlock that. And then you can see my gauge is still sitting at 8750. So I just move that another, whoop, went a little far there. Another 125. And actually I go just a hair more and I'll lock the carriage down again. And I basically do the same exact operation again. So, get started here, run it in by hand till it touches, and then there you go. Now I'm gonna have to use two hands again. 
Um, so, I think this is pretty much going to be it for the video. Uh, thanks for watching, and uh, hope you enjoyed it.